have always been known as the fairy black stick. With my fairy roses and fairy rings, I always gave away gifts of good luck. But the time came when I decided that a little misfortune might make a better gift. Of course, this has made me very unpopular at parties and celebrations. Let me tell you what happened in the kingdoms of Paphlagonia and Crim Tartary. When Princess Angelica of Paphlagonia was christened, I decided to go, uninvited. As I neared the palace, I could hear Gruffanoff, the doorkeeper, quarreling with his wife. What a bad-tempered pair they were. Old Gruffanoff was very rude to me. So rude, in fact, that I thought he should have a chance to think about his nasty ways. He made a very handsome brass door knocker, although everyone supposed that he had run away from his nagging wife. The king and queen felt sorry for Mrs. Gruffanoff, so they made her governess to little princess Angelica. Later, I paid a secret visit to the royal garden and left a little beggar girl with the princess. Princess Angelica was enchanted and wanted to keep her. What a strange but delightful companion. The little girl was very dirty. She said she had come from the forest where she lived with the lions. Once again, Angelica got what she wanted. Mrs. Gruffanoff wasn't at all pleased, but she obeyed the royal orders. A good wash-up and new clothes were needed to make the beggar child fit company for a princess. Her old rags were kept to remind her of her humble beginning. And they named her Betsinda. Twenty years passed slowly and peacefully in the kingdom of Paphlagonia. Betsinda was now lady's maid to the haughty and conceited Princess Angelica. One morning, a letter announced a visit from Prince Bulbo of Crim Tartary the neighboring kingdom. Dreams of a royal wedding, joining the kingdoms of Paphlagonia and Crim Tartary filled King Valorosa's head. But just a minute. The good Prince Giglio should really have been king of Paphlagonia all along. You see, when Giglio was just a baby, Uncle Valorosa stole the kingdom out of his chubby little hands. Since Valorosa enjoyed being king, he was in no hurry to hand it back. Now Giglio was a young prince and deeply in love with Princess Angelica. Poor Giglio. Could his own true love really be in love with Prince Bulbo? Angelica doesn't know it but she's wearing one of my magic fairy rings. It was a family treasure which Prince Giglio gave to her. This ring with a secret makes anyone who wears it beautiful. Giglio could hardly believe his eyes. Was this his beautiful princess? Prince Bulbo had arrived. Everyone must attend his reception. Meanwhile, the ring had found a new owner. Prince Giglio searched in vain for the ring. Why had he never noticed before what a charming woman Mrs. Gruffanoff was? What a welcome was given Prince Bulbo of the Kingdom of Crim Tartary. Bulbo's father, King Padella, would have been delighted with the marriage between his son and the Princess Angelica. The two kingdoms 
Crim Tartary and Paphlagonia would be united. Everywhere he went, Prince Bulbo carried with him a family treasure, a very special rose. It was one of my magic roses. As long as he had the magic rose, everyone loved him. Prince Giglio was overwhelmed by the beauty of the transformed Mrs. Gruffanuff. She wasn't one to let such an opportunity pass by. What seemed like an order for blankets and food for the poor of the kingdom was really a hastily written promise of marriage. Foolish Giglio did not even read what he was signing. Meanwhile, the engagement of Prince Bulbo and Princess Angelica was announced amidst a grand ball. Later that night, Mrs. Gruffanuff gloated over her prize. Soon, very soon, she would become a princess. So pleased with herself was she that she impulsively gave Betsinda the magic ring. Fairy ring worked its magic. But Prince Giglio was moved by more than fairy magic. He fell deeply and truly in love with Betsinda. Of course, she had been in love with him for years. Poor Betsinda. This was more than she had bargained for. Even King Valorosa was bewitched by the fairy ring. Frightened and bewildered, Betsinda didn't know what to do. Out with Betsinda went the old clothes she'd arrived in, a piece of cloak and one little shoe. Even a prince could not hit a king. The prince must die at eight the next morning. Captain Hedsoff loved Prince Giglio, but a soldier must always do his duty. 
Then he heard a sharp whisper. He didn't say which prince. Execute Prince Bulbo instead. The problem was solved. Next morning, Prince Giglio had no desire to face King Valorosa's anger. And Prince Bulbo got a rude shock. Princess Angelica could not believe her eyes. She must do something to save Bulbo. Princess Angelica and Prince Bulbo were married at once. Meanwhile, Betsinda had been walking all night. How she wished she were riding in that coach. She did not know that it was Prince Giglio and I in the coach. He was surprised that I knew him. But he listened seriously to my advice. It was time that he left behind his easy life and learned to be a king. I gave him a magic bag to supply his needs while he studied and prepared himself to become the king, the rightful king of Paphlagonia. Meanwhile, help had arrived for Betsinda. While they were reviving her, her rescuers discovered the piece of cloak and the little shoe. She was, without a doubt, their own Queen Rosalba. When she was very young, King Padella had killed her father and made himself the King of Crim Tartary. The little princess Rosalba had been lost in the forest, and so everyone thought she had been eaten by the lion. There were many people eager to help her win back her kingdom. A year passed in the kingdoms of Paphlagonia and Crim Tartary. Queen Rosalba gathered an army to fight for her kingdom. And at the university, Giglio studied diligently and won many prizes. Count Hoginamo was the most powerful noble in Crim Tartary. Rosalba hoped to win him over to her side. However, he had plans of his own. Marriage was what he had in mind. How 
dared she refuse him? He'd show her. King Padella would like to get his hands on her. Since King Padella liked being king, he was very grateful. While Rosalba languished in the dungeon, the two villains discussed suitable punishment for her. Ha ha! They cried. Let's feed her to the lions in the arena. <laughs> These ferocious lions turned out to be the ones Rosalba had lived with in the forest when she was a child. Unfortunately for him, Count Hoginamo thought these were tame circus lions. back at the university heard the news that Rosalba had been thrown to the lions. He vowed revenge. Rousing speech to King Valorosa's army, he proclaimed himself their rightful king, King Giglio. The army was completely won over. King Valorosa was forced to hand over his crown. Long reign King Giglio. Prince Bulbo must pay the price for what his father, King Padella, had done to Rosalba. Alas, poor Bulbo. Once again he waited for execution, and once again he had done nothing to deserve it. Everyone was sad about Prince Bulbo, but orders must be obeyed. But here was Rosalba, alive. Bulbo was saved. Lovers were reunited. However, their joy was short-lived. King Padella was attacking, and brave King Giglio must go into battle. usurpers, Padella and Valorosa, were banished to wander as monks over the lands they once ruled. At 
last, the happy lovers were to be married. But who should be waiting at the palace door in all her finery? Everyone was astonished. What did Mrs. Gruffanuff want? Could it be that she thought she was to be the bride? And then the blow fell. Mrs. Gruffanuff produced the marriage promise. There was nothing King Giglio could do. He had signed it. It was binding. All his pleading fell on deaf ears. A king must keep his word. Giglio resignedly stepped forward to do his duty. Now, however, it was time for me to step in. I asked Mrs. Gruffanuff again if she would release Giglio from his promise. She refused, saying loudly, I want my husband. My husband, my husband. And so she got him. There was great rejoicing on all sides. Long live King Giglio and Queen Rosalba. And so I flew away, and Fairy Blackstick was never again seen in the kingdoms of Paphlagonia and Crim Tartary.